Hey guys, this is Team Financial Fitness, and we just got through working out on Saturday morning. I got my protein shake here, Stacy's got her coffee, and we were going to sit down and talk to you about how we run the numbers and kind of mm -hmm. how we do these rent houses when we drive up to them. Mm -hmm. And I, I, as I was working out, I was telling her, I said, I, I feel convicted about getting people pumped up about mm -hmm. rental houses because I do. I get pumped up because it's fun. It's just the whole thing's fun. You just got to make it fun. But the bottom line is the market is at an all-time high. Mm -hmm. That's why we are selling our rental properties. We are not financial advisors, mm -hmm. but we want to pass this information along because if we would have known this information pre-2008, <laughs> the people that bought real estate back there mm -hmm. crushed it. That's the guys I learned from. Mm -hmm. And they were getting some crazy deals. And there's a time coming where it's going to be like that. The housing market's up here, and it takes a while to come down. I mean, it's going to take – it could take two or three or four years to get all the way down. But when it does get there, you need to be ready. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go over this, and the first thing we're going to talk about is what will it rent for. When you pull up, you got to know what will this rent for because if they're asking a different price and the rent won't cover the note, you're in trouble. You don't want to be in the red. You don't want to be paying for somebody to live in your rent house. Yes. And if you don't know what it will rent for, contact somebody. Contact a real estate agent. Look online. Figure out that area, what things rent for. That's very important. And sometimes it fluctuates, and you've got to take that into a factor. you got to be willing to go up and down on the rent. And so that's what we had to do. We would mm -hmm. Immediately when we'd pull up, we'd be like, okay, this one rents for 1000 bucks. So we have to get this much money every month. To cover it. And if you know you can get a thousand dollars for it, that means that means just real simple, and you gotta go in deeper, but it, it means you need to be all in at a hundred thousand. Yep. It's called the one percent rule. Yep. That's how I you can just you can you can run a deal real quick to to know if you if you got a hundred grand in it, all in, tax title ready to go, and you're getting a thousand a month, that's you're good. But you can't miss taxes. One month vacancy rate, mm -hmm. insurance. Yep. What else? I'm missing something. And repairs. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's just stop a minute and let's talk about when you find a rent house and you're like, okay, this is going to rent for a thousand dollars a month. This is possibly a good rent house. This is different than if you're making just a regular offer as you're a buyer. You have got to go in and look at this house and look at the repairs, and you've got to. Well, the first house, we actually had someone professionally come in and give us a bid because we didn't know. A couple know, of them. Yeah, a couple of them because we didn't know what things cost. Because I was got, scared to death. Well, yeah, we were scared on our first rent house. We didn't know what things cost. And so you've got to learn approximately what things cost and just be able to walk in and eyeball it. And there's always going to be something unexpected. So if you're saying, hey, it's $5,000 for the floor, I would probably go 6000 because there's always going to be something. This is just us personally. Like we said, we're not financial advisors. Can't tell you how to do it. We just learned the hard way on a few things so you don't come out of pocket. And that's kind of what we did. And then she's we She's always right there, too. She's <laughs> like, it's going to be more. I'm like, no, I can do it cheaper. And she's always right. Well, anyway, so we so that's what we would do. And then we would go back to the seller and we would be like, look, all right, I know we're lowballing you, but we, this is much as repairs. This is what we've got to get on rent so we can only offer you this much. And the numbers have to work. And we've walked away from several houses Oh, yeah. because the numbers just didn't work. And if they don't work, like he said, you're going to pay to have someone in your rent house. Yeah, don't fall in love with the house. Yeah, fall don't. in love with the deal. <laughs> no, don't. Yeah, and don't be afraid to ask questions. And I'll tell you something else. If you do get a contract, the very first thing you want to do is you want to call your insurance company and you want to say, hey, I have this house that I'm looking at and have them run a search because sometimes there will be claims out there because we had one that somebody had filed a claim on a roof they were pocketing the money. However, we were going to be out of pocket to fix the roof. And we went back to them and we were like, nope, you're going to have to come down off this price because you're taking that money. You're not fixing the roof. So there's little tidbits of information like that that you've got to learn. We've learned the hard way on a few things. But this is what we would like to bring to you so that when you do get ready to go look for rent houses, valuable information that well, you when can do. We, and when it's time, I'm going to be yes. doing, you'll know, because I'll be doing the Pee Wee Herman dance up and down <laughs> this. Dun, dun, dun. I'll be, because I really enjoy it. Yes. So yes. we've covered drive up, the 1% rule, mm -hmm. and I'm, gonna sh I'm just going to put this up there, and I want you to take a screenshot of it, because you'll just kind of put log this somewhere in your photos. This 
is how we do it. I think you can see that. Yeah. Screenshot that. And that's just a real basic monthly expenses, tax, insurance, vacancy, monthly rent. It, it'll help you mm -hmm. run the numbers. Because when you get that solid number out there and it's, you know, after everything safely and you're making 100 200 a month yeah on a house that you don't have anything hardly in because you were able to inflate the bid because you've got good credit and they're going to the bank's willing to work with you that's pretty cool and you know i wanted to touch on our first rent house it was scary and we had fights about it because it's the unknown you know it's just so scary but that house is still spitting out 850 dollars a month isn't that cool? So here's another thing also, and this is what we learned. Do we want to go even go down the finance route right now, or do we want to do that for another video? You can touch on it. Okay, so... Part of it. This is another thing that we've learned. So when, we talk, when I talked about the bids, about the repairs and all that kind of stuff, um, he actually taught me this. When he first came to me, he said, Stace, we can get houses zero down. I'm like, whoa, no. I'm a real estate agent. you got to put at least 3.5% in. And he said, I'm telling you, there's a way to do it. Well, there is. Now, you're going to have to go to your lender to see if your lender will work with you on this, but they, on all six houses that we've purchased so far, that's, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We've never put a penny down. They've always paid us at closing. Well, I think we did on the first one. No, we got we to gotta check back because I signed it. You weren't there. Well, there's nothing, when you go do these things, It's there's nothing, I don't know how to say it, because it's not like, we're not going to pay anything down. No, hold on. <laughs> you know, you show up and say, I don't want to pay nothing. No, no. You got to play the game. No, so this is how you do it. So what I was saying about you get the bids, about the repairs, and you always want to make sure and add a little extra because, I, as I said, there's always some unknowns. So what you do is when you go to your lender and you get an offer, you're going to take that offer and you're going to also include that bid. I write my own bids now because we've done this several times now. Used to the first time or two I actually paid for a bid. But now you just write your own bid you include that because you're going to have to have an appraisal. And that appraiser is going to look at it because it's going to be a different kind of loan. It's going to be a commercial loan. And they're going to go, oh, this is not going to pass a traditional appraisal. So this is going to be an investment type loan. And sometimes they'll even call you and you're going to say, yep, this is the bid. This is what I plan to do to the house. So when I'm finished, instead of it being worth 50000 it's going to be worth 100000 now. The bank typically will loan you around 85% of that. So they will give you a check at closing. So say you get the house for 50000 They will give you a check at closing, and you use that to pay mm. for your repairs. And that's how and, we've and done our loans. And if you go over that amount, then it comes out of your pocket. It does. It does. And there are a time or two, I think the first one we had, it came out of our pocket yeah, a little bit. Because we didn't know. We didn't know. Don't worry about it. Just do your best. And you'll know next time, and you'll crush it. Yep. It's like that with everything. Yeah. You're not going to knock it out of the park on your first one. And if you wait around to try to find that great, crazy deal that you get once in a lifetime, you might get once in that lifetime. So just be prepared, get ready, and go for it, man, when it's time. And we're getting close, maybe. I one more thing. Yeah, no, one more thing I want to mention. When you make an offer, typically you have an inspection period. And it's up to you if you want to take that inspection period and do a little bit more legwork. The first house or two, we did. We did a little bit more legwork because we didn't know what we were getting into. After that, we kind of got used to it, and we just went straight to the appraisal. So it's up to you if you want. You have to look in your state, what your laws are. But we have usually typically like 10 days to do an inspection period. Um, but that's up to you if you want to do that yeah, or not. Yeah, and, and, and if you you make your offer and during the inspection something happens, you've got some negotiating Yes, there. you do. And so, we've done hey, that. This We just saw this on our last house. Um you're going to miss things. Yes. Especially on your first one. So it's okay. Because on your next one, you'll see a little leak in the wall. And you'll yes. say, oh, that's, oh, that whole thing's got to come out. Right. Maybe not, but probably so, because the last one did. Most of them yes. do. That stuff, you know, you get in there and the, the, all the kitchen cabinets were rotted out because they'd been wet for 20 years. We had to replace all that. And most people would have been freaking out. But I know now. It's not mm -hmm. a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just some wood and sheetrock. And they got people make a living doing that. I don't do any of the stuff. I just line people up and make sure it's done right. Mm -hmm. uh, so people think I'm always plunging on toilets and doing weird stuff like that. There's people that do that. Mm -hmm. And while you're in this process of learning, I encourage doing it yourself the first time, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Do it yourself. Get in there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And you'll know who to call and who not to call. <laughs> uh, this video is already 10 minutes long. <laughs> well, hopefully, 
we brought some value because um, yeah. we, like I said, we we did the first house we did, we did it ourselves. So we learned all the repairs. We learned the bids. We learned what it cost. And it was so important because the next time we went and did it and somebody would come bring you a bid, I'd be like, whoa, no, that's a little bit too high. Another tip, start creating relationships with uh, different um people like a, a floor guy he'll give you a discount we have a commercial thing right now with the we get flooring we get five percent off and when you buy in bulk start creating these relationships now it's so important that's what we learned i didn't have that on my first house and i wish i would have already created all these relationships in my first house would have been a yeah. lot easier and don't use friends and family to work on your house I never get it done professionally family. Yeah, that's a that's kind of a rule we have. We try not to rent. Well, we'll talk about that later on renters. Yeah. But yeah. Um, another tip: never tell a contractor you've got time ever under any circumstances. You needed it yesterday, no matter what, and pay them. As soon as they get done and you like the job, pay them. Well, I think that's for another video. That's talking about rent repairs. Well, that's what I do. I digress. <laughs> King of digression. Oh, uh, anyway. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's all I've got to say about that. Okay, sounds good. I hope you got something out of this. Go over this, work it through, go up to a house and just do a little mock write up and it'll give you a peace of mind about doing it in the future. I'm getting pumped already. I hope y'all have an awesome day. Hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell. I will see you tomorrow.